Okay, so uh, as Benjamin introduced me, I'm a graduate student, uh, co-supervised by Benjamin Hay Keynes and Trevor Pugh in the Department of Medical Biophysics. And I wanted to present today some of the tools that we're building in our labs uh, to help researchers mine these high throughput pharmacogenomic data sets. So what do we mean by high throughput pharmacogenomic data sets or studies? The idea behind these studies is to take a panel of model systems, uh, usually in the realm of cancer, we use immortalized cancer cell lines, and subject them concurrently to two different types of screening. Uh, one of them is a drug sensitivity screen, where uh, you pick a panel of drugs and test how well they inhibit growth at a variety of concentrations, trying to figure out which cells are sensitive to these drugs. And concurrently, you profile these same cancer cell lines on a molecular level, looking at their DNA, uh, their transcriptome, and their epigenome, with the goal of trying to correlate between the molecular features of these cells and the drug response and find features that could be predictive of the response to therapy. So over the past decade, there's been an explosion in the field with many studies being released. And we're literally investing dozens of millions of dollars as a scientific community into conducting such studies. Uh, so it's important that we make the most of this data. However, one of the big problems is that these data sets can be extraordinarily messy. Um, because of their multi-assay nature, they're often scattered across different data repositories. Uh, it's hard to find the metadata from them. You have to go out uh, to journal supplementary information. Uh, to get the metadata. The identifiers used in the studies are completely unstandardized and often require a lot of manual work, even within the same study, to match between different assays. And importantly, there's no standardization of pre-processing used in the field. So each data, the results from each data set will be technically biased. Uh, knowing these uh, impediments, we knew that for our own research, we'll have to address all these and clean up the data sets. So we wanted to make sure that uh, other people in this community uh, can also use the work we put in tidying up these data sets uh, in their own research. For this, we decided to develop a pharmaco what we call our PharmacoGX platform, which is a set of tools that help you work with pharmacogenomic studies and give you access to uh, tidied up versions of these data sets. Currently, we've taken seven of the largest studies released to date, and we've completely reprocessed, re-annotated, standardized the pipelines and the identifiers used. And we've come up with a database that contains over 1,600 different cell lines, again, 750 compounds, with over 650,000 drug sensitivity experiments, and a possible two, at least 200 million different molecular feature to drug response associations you can investigate. Uh, we're also building tools which we target towards different sectors of the biomedical research community, from uh, people like us who are bioinformaticians or computational biologists, for whom we're building a uh, software package which we call PharmacoGX in our bioconductor, uh, for benchtop researchers who may not want to open up a command line to work with this data, we're building a web application to explore uh, and be able to use this data for hypothesis generation or validation. And we're linking out to tools used more often by clinical researchers, such as the CBio portal, which I'll describe later, and to try and accelerate the translation of the results of these studies into the clinical uh, research domain. So for the remainder, I want to give you a short overview of these three different tools and how uh, people could use them to deal with these pharmacogenomic data sets. So for PharmacoGX, it's an R bioconductor package. And as I mentioned, the idea is that we do, we download all the data, we reprocess it, we standardize uh, and normalize the data, re-annotate it with standardized identifiers, and we create an R data structure, which users can then download from the internet to jumpstart their analysis. We then, once they download this object, we provide several utility functions for users to work with these data sets. Uh, we specifically, within PharmacoGX, are focusing on the drug dose response data, uh, providing functions that allow you to fit hill slope curves to the drug dose response experiments, and then compute various statistics that quantify how sensitive each cell line was to the drug treatment, 
integrating the information across doses. The goal behind our functions is then to be able to create two matrices. One of them, which is a drug versus cell line matrix, quantifying the sensitivity, and the other is a cell versus molecular feature matrix. With the idea that now users will have a matrix of predictive features and the outputs they may want to predict, and they can start to do use this data in their modeling. At this point, you have two options as a user. You can either exit our ecosystem and use your favorite machine learning or statistical methods, or we provide a simple univariate biomarker discovery uh, pipeline within our package, <coughs> where the idea is we're testing between uh, linear associations between various molecular features, such as gene expression, and a quantification of the drug response, while correcting for the tissue of origin of this cancer cell line, and various batch effects in the study. And to pull out the significant associations, we use an analysis of variance at test. Uh, while this is, so far it's good, uh, I guess a good basis for computational biologists to start with, for other people in the biomedical research field, we've also created a web application where they can interactively search through all these studies, searching for either their favorite cell lines and their drugs, looking up summary statistics, and for example, the uh, structure of these compounds, where they can actually explore these drug dose response curves, uh, compare and contrast between different studies, and most importantly, they can search through different molecular features that are univariate pipeline uh, predicted to be, uh, or picked out as predictive of response to particular drugs. Furthermore, however, uh, we also want to accelerate the translation of these studies. And for this, we're plugging into a tool that's often used in uh, clinical precision oncology research, the Cancer Bio Portal. The idea behind this tool is it gives you uh, also a web interface to look at patient data, either at the study level or what's important for clinical research, you could drill down to a specific patient and see the results of their mutation, copy number, or expression screening. The other thing they do is they annotate different findings in the genomics uh, using various external data sets and try to pick out the findings that can be deemed informative or quote unquote actionable within the clinic. So our plan with uh, our pharmacogenomics preclinical data is to pick the most significant associations found in these data sets and the ones that are consistent between studies and create another annotation in tools such as CBioPortal so that you can automatically match patient genomic findings to preclinical data and have predictions for various drugs that patients may be sensitive to. For researchers who want to drill into the data that supports these associations, we'll then build out a connection back to our own web application where they can explore the correlations, they can look at the molecular and the drug response data that came to support it and see how consistent it was between different screens. So in summary, what we're doing is we're trying to clean up and make this field more accessible. And we've put in quite a lot of manpower into manually processing these data sets, which we hope no one ever has to uh, do it again. <laughs> um, the PharmacoGX and PharmacoDB are up now and available for people to use. Uh, we continue developing them. And we're building out to different tools used in other research communities, trying to accelerate the translation of these screens into clinical research. So with that, I want to uh, conclude this short talk by thanking everyone in the Hay Pains and Pew Lab that's contributed to this project, our collaborators at Princess Margaret, all our uh, funding agencies, and uh, if you're interested to learn more, here are the two references for the two tools that are already published. <laughs>